Hi, my name is Matthew Ogamba. I'm a senior international affairs major here at Lewis and Clark College. And I'm from Rwanda and I'm a fashion designer too. Um, what I'm going to talk to you guys today is I'm, I'm going to share my personal story, my experience with my fashion label House of Tire over the past 12 months. It's been a crazy, it's been roller coaster, a roller coaster ride for sure. And I've been through so many different experiences that it's, it's hard to sum up in one 20 minute talk. But what I'm going to share with you is not necessarily just my story, but um, more a way of thinking, a philosophy that you may be able to adapt to your own lifestyle, your dreams, your own ambitions, or your own um, careers. And so I called it um, from model UN to models and catwalks, turning your passion into a career, because I really felt like I was going into a career of international politics. I might still end up there, I don't know right now, but at the time I started House of Tab, that just seemed my natural you know, progression. I had done stuff like Model UN, I had stu studied international affairs since my first day here, and I would just been doing things that are more in that direction. Then all of a sudden, 12 months ago, I started doing fashion out of seemingly nowhere. And it was just, a passion that came out to, I mean, I guess it developed and festered over time, but to many people it just it just sprung up, and and today I'm going to talk about you know turning something you love or something you have a, an interest in into a career, making it tangible, making it um, you know so you're able to make money off of it and survive, and um, so I'm going to so this is this is me August. 20th, uh, 2011, Kigali, Rwanda. I know that looks like an alleyway, but that's actually where my first tailor worked. She didn't have any resources, no electricity, so when the, when the sun sets, that was her day of work, that's it done. Um, she had a, a step a pedal um, sewing machine, and just that alleyway where she had the charcoal iron, and that's what she used to iron the stuff. I stumbled upon her. I honestly didn't trust the person, a tailor that worked in this, you know, in a place like that. But that's just the story for many tailors in Rwanda. They can't make substantial incomes of of what they do. And I really, I after seeing that, I wanted to change that because some of them are incredibly talented. Anyway, that's me with my first couple, first um, batch of material, trying to make the first batch of notes. I know when you look at a picture like this, you, you might think, why did he decide to take a picture then? Did he know it was going to be like this one year down the line? No, I didn't. But I really felt, uh, you know, strong passion inside for this, and I, and I wanted to celebrate each milestone, and that was personal. I didn't care that whether anyone else saw these pictures. It was just a personal thing where I wanted to document, okay, I made my first 10 snoots and bow ties out of my own money. I worked with, and then now I'm making 20. Now I'm making 30, that was what was important to me. And then, fast forward to not even a year, I mean, this 4th of August, uh, 2012, I was fortunate enough to be in London doing a fashion show, being part of Africa Fashion Week London, which I, if you told me that even two, three, or three months before that, I would have said, you know, you're playing around. I, I don't believe it. But I mean, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to work hard enough to be there. And this is just a short video that just gives you a glimpse into my experience there. This is House of Tail. <laughs>
So yeah, London was definitely a great experience for me. It opened my eyes up to, you know, just, you know, the possibilities. Because if I was able to do that, what, what can stop me now? Why, why can't I reach even further than that? And also it helped me validate, you know, have inner validation and know that even though I might not have experience with this before, if I can, if I can be alongside people who've been doing it 15 years, 20 years, then I should believe that I'm able to continue doing it. And so more than, more than um, getting validation for house attire in the fashion world and in African fashion as a whole, it was also a, a, a lot for me as well. Now, there's something that I really want to stress today, and that's um, why. Why is the most important question you should ask yourself before you do anything. And the reason why I think that it's so important, I was, what, as my, the idea for House of Tai was coming up, one of my friends, actually the guy who designed the logo, said, he, I shared with him my, my idea, and he said, you know what, there's a talk that, that just verbalizes everything that you're trying to describe to me. Because I was, with, I was Skyping with him and I just kept saying, you know, it's that thing, you know, uh, I can't describe it, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And then he was like, watch this talk and then we'll Skype again. I watched the talk and it's a by, by a guy called Simon Sinek. And he said, and he, it was called, how great, uh, start with why, how great leaders inspire action. And he basically says that the, the leaders who are able to rally us, the corporations that are able to get us to buy their products the best, that the most, and just without questioning, are the people who start with why. So he has this um, golden circle, he calls it the golden circle, and the most effective leaders and the most effective companies start with why and work their way out. For example, and the exa this is the example he gives, Companies, other companies that you know deal with technology. Let's let's just say HP. HP has a new laptop, so they they start to, they start from outside the circle and they say, okay, we have a fantastic laptop computer. It's great. It has great specs. Blah blah blah. How 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 do we how do we do that for you? By making it user friendly and beautifully designed, and then say, would you want to buy one? I mean, but you don't. Unless you know stats in and out and specs in and out, you're not really, you, there's no connection. Whereas Apple, on the other hand, starts from the inside. They say, well, this is what we want to do, they start with the why. They say, we want to challenge the status quo, we want to be innovative, we want to push the boundaries. Then they say, and then they ask how. How are we going to do this? We're going to do this by getting beautifully designed um, computers that are easy to use and user-friendly. Then they say, would you want to buy one? And then you're more inclined, there's that connection that makes you convinced and makes you want to really get that product. And that's why many people will, will not just buy, you know, the MacBook from, from, from Apple. They'll get the, the iPad, they'll get the iPod. You're more comfortable to getting these things. But then if you said, or if someone said, um, oh, I have a, um, an MP3 player from, from um, HP, people look at you weird and they say, they're a computer company, but so is Apple. But you see there's a difference there. And it's the way you start with why, what, why you're doing something and it gives you that passion and more people are able to buy into to what you're trying to do. Now, for me, I, I had to find my own why. <laughs> <laughs> I had to find my own why, so what is motivating me? And I, I started off with a question, you know, I know this is going to sound very conceited, but am, am I a genius? This is something I've never done before. And it just happened to, to fall into place. And, and so I started to, to question myself and think, but it, I mean, that was ridiculous. But nonetheless, I, I always had this feeling, even from when I was younger, that there'll be something that I was very good at that I just hadn't tried. So that means I did like every sport from field hockey to cricket to soccer to rugby, tennis, badminton. I did all those things. I, I, I saw myself as a writer, photographer once, chef, soccer player, fashion designer now, international politician. I'd see myself in so many areas and I thought that that would be 
my series, that, that, that's what I'll end up doing. And I just kept trying all these things. And, but whenever I tried them, I tried to, to convince myself this is, what I, this is what I was made to do. And so it was that um, conviction that I was good at something. And, and when you find, you find that thing that you feel you have that connection to, you give it your all and you just go full steam ahead even if there's so many barriers that you might see in your way. And so there was that, there was that element and that's why I've continued pushing with House of Tyre um, despite some of the challenges I may have faced. Then the second thing is uh, the mini crisis. I, I, you know, my 21st birthday had come and gone. You know, leading up to 21, you're like, oh yeah, I can finally go out, I can go party, it's going to be crazy, it's going to be fun. But you know, after that, you're like, oh my God, graduation's on the horizon. And then after graduation, I'm, I'm entering the real world. Am I expected to get married after that? What's going to happen? There's no, there's no structure. School gives you, um, it gives you a plan. You always know, okay, this, then that, then that. But then when you start to, when school's out of the way and you no longer have that plan set for you, I, I started to panic. And, and another reason I started to panic was because I knew that if I didn't come up with something while I was in college, I'll be missing a great opportunity. I realized I had only two years left to make sure that I capitalized on everything on the college campus outside the classroom. This is the only time you're surrounded by people who are talented in so many different things. I mean, you, just looking around this room, there's probably someone who's specialist, history, probably a great photographer, probably a great artist, dancer, you name it. And this is the only time that you have these type of people around you who are willing to do work for free. <laughs> I must stress that. That's an important thing. I had no money. I still have no money to pay for many of these things, but I will find my models on campus, photographer on campus, and they're all just happy to do it. They're happy to work with you. So you have to realize that a lot, a strong reason we come to learn in colleges is not just for what we learn in the classroom, it's what we learn from each other, and we should be ready and willing to capitalize on everyone around um, us. And a third thing that really contributed to, to, to uh, my, my why is um, this feeling of you know, changing the image of Rwanda. Now, many of you know that Rwanda is known for the genocide. But there's this strong feeling within the youth in Rwanda that that should not be the only thing we're known for. We don't want, you know, you don't want to type into Google um, Rwanda and then they ask, did you mean genocide? You know, things like that. You, you want to, we want everyone to know that we have another side, that we have a very great side that they don't ever get to see. And I mean, raising my hand in class every now and again when Africa is mentioned, um, might change like one mind or two minds at most. And, and on top of that, who, who am I for everyone to take my opinion seriously? And so I wanted to create something that would be able to do that job for me. That would be able to, to tell people about the great things in Rwanda, in Africa, and it's not just a place where there's wars, famines, and that kind of thing. That there's, that there's more to, to, to my home, to home, the home of so many people I know. And so I really, that was something that I was really determined to do. And it just happened that it was fashion. It could have been something else. It could have been um, storytelling. I could be writing books about that side of Africa, but it just happened to be fashion. And whenever, it, it helps me stay on track. Whenever I create something, I think, is this creating the best image of Africa? Is this creating my, my vision or my vision of Africa, which is you know, elegance, class, sophistication, dignity? And so my, once I found my why, I was, I was ready to go. I mean, I created the snut and bow ties by that point, but I hadn't created the brand. So I, I, you know, I thought about it. The logo, the whole thing took about four months while I was actually doing my semester in DC. And in January is when I first put out the first couple of House of Tyro pictures. Now I'm going to talk about my how, how I got to, to where I, I am 
right now. And it all tracks back to the why. If, if I'm able to, to, to believe so strongly in what I'm doing, it's, it's, it's easier for people to latch on to that and to, to, to feel more connected to it. So it's a strong belief in, in the idea and, and just the ability to communicate it. Because you, can ha you might have the idea, but if people can't, if people don't know exactly what it is, or not able to, to, to um, understand it fully, it loses, it loses value. So on one, on one side, it helped me convince my family that this is something to, that they could take seriously. My parents have been incredibly proud and supportive of me um, throughout my education, um, you know, coming here, getting a scholarship and everything to, to, to be here. And they just didn't want me to throw all this away on some feeling I had. So they were very concerned. And I'm grateful that, that they are, you know, not many people are, but um, th they were concerned about me and they sat me down multiple times to talk about, okay, what's your plan for this? Where do you see it going? And many of the times I couldn't fully say, I just knew I had a vague vision of what I wanted it to be, but I didn't have every single step laid down. But then I was able to communicate exactly, I was able to communicate my why and like why, what was driving me, what my passion was and what I was trying to achieve. And that, you know, that got them on board. And then on the other side, it helps you build a team. So many companies, so many people have um, other people working for them just for the paycheck. And people come and do the absolute minimum if they know they're gonna get paid. But if people buy into your why, if people buy into your idea, then they're more likely to go that extra mile for you. So, so many people, actually all the people that I work with, that I work with now, don't get any pay at all. They, they barely get recognition. Um, I, I mean, I try to do my best, but I take most of it. That <laughs> 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 came out wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so I've been more of the face of House of Tire, but I have a very strong team that is incredibly supportive, taking, helping me every step of the way. And you just have to make sure that you're able to share your why and people are able to understand it for, for it to be effective. Now, the second um, reason why I think House of Tire has got to where it is, it was a strong brand. And that, once again, goes back to the why. Since I know exactly what I want to do, it's easy to, 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 to bring it all into one umbrella. And I, I know exactly how the pictures should look. I know what type of press I want to do. I know what type of shows I want to be a part of, just based on, on the why. And that's how you do it. And so my, my brand is one I wanted to be, you know, an elegant African, dignified. And I think, and I believe that it, start, it communicates that. And that's why so many people um, from Africa, from, you know, the States, Europe, are, are impressed by it. And they feel like if they've seen something new, but it isn't something totally new. It's the idea and the concept that I feel is. And another um, important um, point that I must stress that has helped me to get House of Tire where it is, is knowing my strengths and weaknesses. I know some of you are thinking, you know, why would you want to know your weaknesses? Does it affect your self-confidence? I, I, I totally disagree because if you're trying to do something um, quite big, you have to know where, you, where you're lacking. And, you're, and more than that, you have to be able to identify who has the quality you're looking for that will compensate for whatever you're lacking. So the, the team I have, the team that I help me right now, we don't have we don't have the same we don't have the same uh, qualities we don't have the same um, strengths, because it would almost be redundant if I had. Yeah, I mean it's like think about it. You have ten designers, and no accountant, no person who understands production. It it won't work. You have to look for the people who have the strengths where you lack, and I think that's very important. Now, I know you see procrastination out there and you're probably thinking that's a weakness, but I'm going to try and convince you that that was one of my strengths. 
Now, you know that guy who was the first one to post all these weird videos on YouTube of crazy things, <laughs> you know? That, I, I'm that guy. Uh, but, so I spend hours on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, uh, you know, seemingly aimlessly. But it's by doing this for so many years, when I should have been doing essays and stuff, um, I figured out exactly how the internet works. I figured out why, you know, posting pictures from an album at, let's say, 6 p.m. is better than doing it at lunchtime, or better than doing it at, at midnight. You figure out when people are around the world are awake. And small things like this have really made a difference for me. I know when people, the both people in Africa and people here are awake, and I can post my links at that time, get the maximum exposure that it can get. You understand what makes you understand the, the rationale behind why people post some videos and don't post others. What captures your attention? And by understanding that, I was able to. You know, I mean, I have like 200 more pictures than I actually post. But how many of you go through every picture of a 200 picture album? I doubt any of you really do, unless you have a lot of time on your hands. Um, but. It's, it's more effective to have maybe 10 quality ones, where people look through once, then they look through again, and then they, 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 they will remember them, the things that, you make things that are memorable, and keep people entertained, because it's, it's a lot about the story. As I mentioned, people love the product, people think it's new and innovative, but they, they don't realize how much they're attached to the story, and that's why I say the why is very important. And another, Another thing that I think was a strength was my ability to storytell. Story storytelling has been a big part of my upbringing. Um, when my family moved from London to Uganda, first of, the thing that frustrated me the most was that electricity used to go off every other night. But as soon as it would go off, my dad really didn't want us to, to feel like we want we need to move back to London. He really wanted us to settle in Uganda, which is his home and our home as well, and one of our homes. And so he used to do this thing where as soon as the lights would go up, he's like, you know, it's a variety hour. So my sister and I, he, my mom, sometimes, sometimes the other people, whoever was in our house that night would be part of the variety hour where um, you either sang, you danced, but most of the time it was storytelling. So, and I think that's also just a big part of African culture. You used to, you know, you know what captures, what grips people, keeps them entertained. You know how to reveal information and sometimes and um, hold on to it, and that's how I've been able to to communicate the story of, of House of Tyre so well. I mean, storytelling has helped me, you know, in other regards. You know, when I'm handing my paper late, uh, <laughs> late for class, helps with the ladies sometimes. But uh, yeah, most of all, it's helped me with um, House of Tyre. It's really been been a uh, huge huge um, part of it. And lack of experience, that's my number one weakness. But why I buy but I'm grateful that I know it. And so I've been looking for people who compensate. As I said before, look for people who have strength where you lack. So most of the people I work with have some sort of experience with that. Um, the tailors, the people who help me with my sketches as well. And these photographers, you know, it's just so many different people that you have to rely on to, 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 to compensate for where you lack. And I have a question mark besides luck, because if you asked me four months ago, did I believe that it was luck that got me where I am, I would say yes. But then now I say I totally disagree with that, because luck makes you lazy. Knowing that someone got lucky, you feel like you don't have to, you, that you can't achieve it because it just happened to that person. And, and luck makes you satisfied, you satisfied with just waiting instead of working towards your goals. I feel that luck is where opportunity and, and preparedness um, coincide. So you might have, you might be very, I mean, you might have the opportunities and so many opportunities pass many of us by. I'm sure I, I know so many different opportunities that have passed me by 
just because I was with, I was too afraid. I was like, I'm not convinced this is for me, or I'm not entirely prepared. But this one, for this this opportunity, I said, you know what? I'm going to grab it with both hands. Maybe wrap a leg around it too. <laughs> and I was going to go. I was going to go straight for it when the opportunity came. And and so that's why I say I'm not lucky anymore. And it it will keep it keeps motivating me. Knowing that you're not lucky, you have to make your own luck. You have to make your own opportunities come around. And I think that that's just something. For, I mean, you can apply that to anything you do. Your job search. You apply it to, to um, you know, tests. You might think, oh, okay, um, I might get lucky and they'll ask this question. No, you shouldn't. You should, you should make sure you're ready for every question. You, know, you, should, you should be prepared and then luck will come about. Um, now, I'm not really going to dwell on the what because I know you know what the what is. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a clothing label that tries to portray the best in Africa. You know? And in terms of the future, I'm not, a hun I, I'm not I, have, I have vague ideas and I'm trying to plan towards them, but it, I mean, just judging from my past year, it's very hard to plan exactly what's going to happen. And I think that if my next year with House of Tired is even half as good as this past year was, there almost any there, there isn't much that can really stop us. There, there, there shouldn't be any limits. Who knows? Maybe you might see this inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. So thank you, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. I, it feels good to share my story, and I hope um, you're able to pick up a few things from there. And also thanks to Musa, and you know, setting up the student lecture series great opportunity for us to share with each other. Uh, yeah, so thanks. <laughs>